I am going to read from a script because I want to not take a lot of your time. So if you have some questions, we can always go back on this, but uh, I've got a presentation to you about Wildcat Canyon. I'm not sure if any of you have ever seen before. All right. Here we go. Edgar, do I look good? You look fantastic. Okay. All right, here we go. So I, I first want to give you a little introduction just so you understand uh, where we're going here. My family moved into East Richmond Heights in 1960. My friends and I love Wildcat Canyon, just a block and a half right behind us. And our parents always let us explore the canyon a lot. We always found our way out and always got home with stories to tell. When I started at Kennedy High School the first year it opened, at the invitation of Fire Chief Ray Martin, I joined the Richmond Fire Explorers, which later turned into the Richmond Fire Cadets. It's a program for teenagers to learn about firefighting in the fire department and train towards a career. I would never have known about tonight's story in the canyon if I hadn't joined that program. So I'm going to start in 1968 when we all showed up on a Saturday for routine training and we're told we were going to spend the day checking for fire trails out in Wildcat Canyon. We headed out on two small trucks on the Canyon Road from Alvarado Park, crossing uh, barbed wire gates that were easy to get through and going up on the Conlon Trail. What we saw at that top was astonishing. We found ourselves on an active military base, people in army uniforms, driving army jeeps and trucks around army looking buildings with radar moving around. I had no idea that was up there. This was one of 12 permanent Nike missile bases around the Bay Area. And ours in Wildcat Canyon was a double site. It was actually the largest one around the Bay with two sites combined right next to each other. These were built because at that time during the Cold War, Nike missiles were the last line of defense against the Soviet Union. The belief was at that time, the Soviets could fly, fly airplanes with hydrogen atomic bombs into the Bay Area to destroy our military bases that were here, the Presidio, Treasure Island, Mare Island, Hamilton Air Force Base, Travis Air Force Base, Alameda Naval Air Station, and more. The red dots are where the bases were. I'm just gonna focus on ours in Wildcat Canyon uh, but at the end, I'll mention number 88 you see in Marin County on the left there. So where was all this? Here we are looking at uh, East Bay Regional Park's map of Wildcat Canyon. And you see in the lower left uh, where we live, East Richmond Heights. I'm going to color it purple, roughly. <laughs> Across the canyon to the east in orange is the radar site. In the blue area is the neighborhood where family homes were built for the permanent workers at the base. The red is the underground missile silos with their launching pads on top. And the green was the rest of the military base. This was where they had the ready room, administration, offices, maintenance, storage buildings. There was a mess hall to feed everyone, three large barracks to house other temporary workers and people coming up to stay for a few days. Athletic courts, hobby shop, there was a gas dispensing station, grease rack, motor repair shops, everything that was needed at that time. I was able to get a blueprint. This is an as-built drawing of everything in 1965. And essentially it's four areas out there in the canyon. The radar site on Potrero Ridge, the houses, the missile silos, and the base, which had everything else. Looking down at what the radar site was <clears throat> at the end of Nimitz, this is where Nimitz Way ended. The houses, these were 10 single family homes and 13 duplexes, which provided 36 three bedroom homes. One of the duplexes here in 1968 in the lower left, um, is gone. I don't know what happened to that one. And you see the square thing at the bottom right there, just across the street. 
That is one of the missile silos. Look at how close that was to the neighborhood. Here are the underground six silo missiles sites. All you can see, of course, is the concrete launching pads on top. And here's the rest of the base, all those other uh, buildings I mentioned. So looking down as the crow flies, look here at the left, at the top. On the left is, uh, that's pointing, arrows pointing to Del Monte Avenue, right by the golf course. And if you go straight east is the radar site. And then below, past that and below the housing, the silos and the base. You can see Rifle Range Road. I know many people know about. In those days, it went all the way down to the old horses stables that used to be down there. So back up to 1955, the two radar sites right next to each other have been developed. Here's a better picture looking east of the radar site. Now I won't get too technical for you guys, but uh, the radar worked like this. One unit on the right was the acquisition radar and it picked up what was coming in uh, from a uh, what was actually an Air Force base on Mount Tamalpais that was the primary facility looking out over the ocean to see, you know, uh, what, what threat could be coming to this part of Northern California. Another unit tracked the incoming plane with a nuclear bomb that's up there. And then the other radar tracked the Nike missile that was launched from Wildcat Canyon. And the, the goal was that it launched the Nike missile and guide it to the intercept point and blow that plane up with a nuclear missile, hopefully over the ocean before it got too close. So here's a, a little better picture, 1955 of the base and a launching pad just up the hill from the San Pablo Dam Reservoir. And if you look down here, there's San Pablo Dam Road. So around the middle, which has an area that goes out that way, just right straight up this cliff, here's the six Nike missile launching sites up there and the rest of the base. Underground, those concrete bunkers, this is what was in there. They had four Nike missiles loaded and ready to go at all times. And they had six more also stored underground right next to it. The four that were there could be loaded onto an elevator and brought up very quickly. And this is what it looked like up on top and down below with the four missiles being ready to go above ground there. Now, this is a picture that I don't know that anybody has really seen. It is declassified and this is the Nike missile base in 1959, and look at this, we've got four missiles ready to launch just above the San Pablo Reservoir. And look up here to the north, there's El Sobrante right there. I was amazed to see this, but even more astonishing is my next picture. We're gonna turn and look west, 1959. There's East Richmond Heights, and look at what we've got here. 24 Nike missiles ready to fire just across the canyon from where we were. Now, unfortunately, uh, this day they took the picture, it was, it was real smoggy and you can't see South Richmond and the Bay out there, but that's what's down there. And then next to the word West is Angel Island. So are you ready for more? <laughs> There's another piece, another twist to this story. In the late 1960s, ICBMs, those are long range intercontinental ballistic missiles, rendered the Nike missile bases obsolete. And these bases around the world began to shut down. The military took what they wanted from our base, but they left most of the buildings and houses there unlocked and the underground silos became a place to party. This was around 1970, 71, and I say this from personal experience, I was one of those kids with friends who would go up and explore them with Coleman lanterns. The government had hired private security guards and removed their military police. So they were, had security guards up there to watch the area, but they never caught us. In fact, sometimes we were up there, nobody was there. We had the entire base to ourselves. 
Now, I'm going to back up to 1969. Oh, sorry. Where am I at here? I, I'll continue that, but I just wanted to share this with you. This is, this is the picture I bought from historic aerials of all of Wildcat Canyon in 1968. And uh, I chose this because I was, it's high resolution. I was able to uh, zoom in on all those pictures I've shown you so far, but you see up here in the upper corner, there's, Sam, there's the Wildcat Canyon Road going out there. Here's the golf course, East Richmond Heights is all in this area. And then straight out, like I say, from Del Monte Avenue, you come to the radar site, the housing, the base, everything is out there. So. I decided to buy this so I would have a copy and, and be able to use it. And you can also see all of the canyon and the Hayward Fault, which we're on top of, all the way down to here. There's Jewel Lake down there, Children Park, where the, natu the uh, nature area is and all that stuff is down there. But at the same time, we had this whole base going on out here. All right, sorry, I missed one slide. I'll move forward. So. November 20th, 1968, Indians moved onto Alcatraz. 89 men, women, and children occupied Alcatraz, and the group Indians of All Tribes Incorporated was formed. That's a whole nother story, so I'm not going to go into that, but I'll end it with this. After four historic Alcatraz buildings were destroyed by fire, and a super tanker ship had a collision because the lighthouse and foghorn wasn't working. The government removed the Indians in June of 1971. On June 14, 1971, 50 Indians took over the Nike building. <clears throat> Indians also took over other abandoned Nike military sites, one Nike base in Chicago at the same time as a big deal, and other areas. They had to pack everything in. There was no food, no water, no electricity, or anything else working at the base. And they moved into the houses, which were still there. And uh, this is the main street going through there. The houses were boarded up as far as the windows, but the doors were all open. And uh, they were all unlocked. So I'm going to show you a short video here. It's only about two minutes. And the sound that you can hear will start with the security guard talking. That this morning, uh, we aren't going to interfere if there's fires or anything like that going on. So. Yeah. Uh, this morning at four o'clock, uh, my partner and I were startled by a knock on the door, which was very unusual for this time of that time of morning for being in this area. And uh, I asked who it was, and they informed me that they were Indians. And uh, at that time, I took it for granted it was just some long hairs up here that had camped out for the night and was up here playing games. Mm -hmm. And when I opened the door, and surely enough, there's 50 Indians standing at the door. So I asked them what were they were doing up here, and they said they come to take the land over. So I said, well, you can't do that because uh, this is government property and uh, you're trespassing. They said, well, we're here to stay. Uh, this is happening because the government did what they did on Alcatraz. We haven't forgot. If uh, the government would have made some kind of an honorable settlement out there and wouldn't have lied to us, this wouldn't be necessary here right now. This is just, they took the island back through uh, dishonorable terms, really. So we have to have some place to go, so this is it. Well, how about Alcatraz? Do you still have hopes or plans to go back on the island? I don't know, maybe we can talk government into trading. See what they want to do about uh, that. John Trudell, the Indian who was also the spokesman for Alcatraz, what about Alcatraz? Would you take that back? Do you want to go back? And he said, it depends if the government wants to trade the Nike missile base for Alcatraz. Anyway, that's that's pretty much it on the video clip here. And uh, but you could see the whole area that was out there in the canyon and the East Bay Regional Park Rangers, which of course are now is a police force out there, but they they didn't do anything. Uh, but things did not last out there. I think what happened is uh, that there was a fire out there with no water 
uh, it got really bad and that was the end of the occupation out there. Everything at the, at the site just continued to deteriorate there, things rusted. This is an elevator door. It's, it's similar to the one that was out there. Um, and you could look down the hatches. Water was leaking into the underground silos. Um, they all had doors like this, where you'd walk down the stairs to go in. The last time I was there at that time, one of the missile silos had about three feet of water, and it was like an indoor swimming pool under there. I'm guessing it was spring water or something, but... Uh, uh, at that point, so just a quick look back, 1958, here's the active missile base at that time. And then I'll take us to 1980, everything is gone. The only thing left that's still out there is the radar site has got a couple concrete slabs. And, uh, but that's it. There's nothing identifying what was out there. So I'm going to end with the Nike missile site I mentioned, 88. This is the only complete Nike base that still exists today. It is part of the National Park Service in Marin County at Fort Barry in the Marin Headlands. And I highly recommend taking a couple hours to tour it. It's free, and you get to it by going through a long tunnel near Sausalito out towards the ocean, and it's up there on the hill. Um, it is a complete Nike missile base with missiles that are dummies, of course, and uh, they will raise them up uh, above the, the ground so you can see how they worked. And you also even get to go underground in those silos, just like what we have out here in Wildcat Canyon, and you can see what they look like at that time. So with that, um, they're open uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday every week, as long as it's not raining from 12. 30 to 3.30, and on Saturdays, they have some Nike veterans sometimes there to talk about what their life was like, you know, working at these sites. So I have to offer my credits here. Historic Aerials is where I got that uh, amazing shot, and it, it's quite a website. They have the largest collection of aerial shots from weather balloons and the military and airplanes across the United States. And you can, you can pull up their viewer and you can kind of look around, you know, wherever you want to go in, in the United States and see by year where they have pictures. So you can go back into the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and uh, they can put it together. I did have them sew my picture together. So there's some overlapping, but I wanted the whole canyon to be able to use for this and have a copy of the Nike Historical Society, which maintains that site out there uh, at the National Park Service, Military Museum, MilitarySTANDARD.COM. The video I got is one of many that's available through San Francisco State University, their digital archive system. And those are mostly B, what they call B-rolls. That's where Channel 5 and Channel 7 just, took, let, just let their cameras run with uh, to capture what was going on out there at the time. And then they cut and pasted whatever pieces they wanted to use for our TV broadcasts that we saw back in 1971. And then of course, public domain and my own experiences out there way back in those days. So with that, that's the end of my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? And I'm gonna close this so I can go back and see you all. There. Thank you, John, that was very enjoyable. Okay. You guys got to see it in here? Okay. Because I can mm -hmm. see what was going on. So, okay. There you have it, Wildcat Canyon. And uh, there's a lot more that went on in Wildcat Canyon that, you know, we can uh, talk about and show in the future. There's John, excuse me, John. Yeah, John. Going back, going back to your presentation. So, in 1959, all of that was still there? Oh, yes. So, so my parents opened that store, you know, the Arlington Market in 1955. So nobody knew there was a base over there? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I wouldn't have known if I hadn't been in that fire department explorers. I was and, a year old when they opened the store. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that base was out there all these years. And then I was just blown away by what was there. But uh, um, you can find some things if you just Google it online. Nike Missile Base, and it's actually city of Richmond property. It's Tilden Park, but now, I mean, it's now 
you know, Wildcat Canyon Regional. And I, I really was fascinated that link between the Mount Tam base and here. And in over there, they took the top of a whole mountain off to build something. And here it was under our nose for so long. So that, that's an interesting link and, and great to, to learn that. So I yeah. appreciate that. Well, thank you. I, I had no idea until I got into getting the nuts and bolts of this. There was so much I actually found online. That was the Mill Valley Air Force Station on the side of Mount Tamalpais, not up on yeah. the top. Right, yeah. <laughs> and it was abandoned too. I think it's still a bit of a mess. Yeah. Uh, but I heard stories of there would be families up there and the, the military children would go be bused down to school and back. I'm not sure how much, if they were top secret or not, but that was an interesting yeah. angle. At, at our Wildcat Canyon base, they had a whole children's play yard there where the homes were built. And um, they had to bus people. The, the only way you could come and go, were supposed to come and go, were from the paved Nimitz Way that would take you to Inspiration Point in Tilden Park. And then from there, I'm not sure where, where they would go, whether to Berkeley or to Orinda from there. All right, thanks for that, Fran. Um, sure. Anything else? So we are in public comment. Is there anything else, uh, Joanna? You're on mute. Sorry, I was. I'm sorry. I got distracted by the transcript feature. I was looking at it. It's very cool. Um, uh, that'll definitely make taking notes easier. And thank you for the presentation, John. I um, I'm I assume that we'll be able to go back to the recording and show this presentation if we or direct somebody to it on the YouTube channel. Is that right? Yeah, because especially that shot with the with the with the missiles there with our neighborhood in the background. It's amazing. Okay. Thank you.